let me ask you this then. Mm-hmm. In your opinion, and Kirby, I want to hear your thought process on this, and Alex, I want to hear yours on this as well. What to you, and I know it's subjective to each person, but what to you qualifies as a deal you're going to take the shot on? Is it two hundred, three hundred thousand, or three hundred thousand dollars a month, or what, what's that cash flow look like for you? Uh, well, for me, it for me it looks it looks first. I go with the one percent rule. I mean, I know you're familiar with that. You know, Absolutely. if the revenue that's coming in is one percent of the list price, that's that's my baseline. If it's not cash flow positive at day one, I'm not touching the deal. I know mm-hmm. I can rehab the place. I know I can. Uh, raise the rents, but that's work that I have to do. I'm not paying a seller for work that I have to do. So whatever they have done in the time that they own the property, if the cash flow matches up, I will pay them based on the value of how much uh, rent is coming in. Right. And then from there, it's just, um, I'm working on a, five, a six unit. Yeah, Georgia six unit. I'm working on a six unit one right now. And for me, it's about acquiring as many units as possible. Right. So maybe you getting three, $400 a door on your first deal. And you just keep, you keep acquiring units that three and $400 for each door that you grab, it'll mm-hmm. eventually accumulate to thousands, 10,000, hundreds of thousand dollars a month that you bring it in over time. If you just keep stacking them up on top of each other. Got it. So it's a, it's a quantity and quality thing. It's not one versus the other. It's kind of a balance in between the two. Correct. Okay. Alex, what about you, man? What are you looking for when you're going out to find a deal? What What's giving you the okay? Is it the 1% yeah. rule? You at 2, 20%? What, what are you looking at? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm a little bit more conservative. Kirby's on a conquest, a war path. But uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, I'm trying to keep the, I, I try to do the 1% rule. And then if it can at least pull in cash flow more than uh, the S&P 500, which for those that may not know is an index fund on the stock market that, over the long term brings in about 10% a year. So if I can make them more above that, then I think I'm good. Okay. Fantastic. All right, gentlemen, let's do the, uh, I got so much I want to ask y'all, but we're going to do the troop to task. Cause I'm very respectful of everybody's time. So let's do the troop to task for those watching and listening. Troop to task is a military term. What we do is we provide a soldier, a sailor, an airman, a specific instruction on something that they can do and then come back after that mission is complete and we give them the next assignment. So for each of the gentlemen, I'm going to ask them what the troop to task for you is today. So let's start out with Alex. Alex, what's your troop to task for the listener today? I would say take more action and don't be, uh, don't be afraid. Just, I, I really love the quote, learn to be, you have to learn to be, uh, you have to learn to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, I would, I would go with that. I like it. All right, Kirby, what about you? Uh, it's go out and get it. I mean, I mentioned, you know, reading books and things like that, but just gaining knowledge by itself don't mean nothing. It's useless if you just have the knowledge and you're not going out there and putting it to action. It's going out there and putting it to action. No matter how many books you read, no matter how many YouTube videos you watch of people giving you financial advice or advice about anything, period. If you don't put it into action, it won't do you no good. Oh, ladies and gentlemen. Alex and Kirby have given you a bunch of easy ways to go about improving your own financial position and even giving you some advice on real estate investing yourself. And with that said, we're going to hop into now the game we call the hot seat. Now we're going to have a fancy transition here. So there's some fancy transition. It just happened. All right, cool. Now we're jumping into this. <laughs> My editor's going to kill me. All right. Um, so all three of us going to, I think I'm going to join you guys on this one. It might be fun. So all three of us going to answer these questions. Um, and we're going to go from my right, which is Alex, jump okay. to Kirby, and then I'll, I'll answer last, and we'll mix it up in between there. All right. Okay. So, Alex, first question. What puts me in a good mood immediately? You or me? You. Oh. Well, I mean, I'm going to answer, too. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to answer, too. What puts me? Is yeah, yeah. What okay. puts you in a good mood? Puts oh, me. I did say what's me. That's wrong on the car. My um, bad. Go ahead. <laughs> immediately. Yeah. Probably coffee. I don't know. <laughs> Probably coffee, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, coffee. Okay. Fair enough. All right, Kirby. What about you? We'll put you in a good mood immediately. Uh, when the property management management sent me the email saying the check came in. How did I know? How did I know? All right. That's fair enough. That's fair. 
for me, um, I if I put on Lionel Richie's All Night Long, it's 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 game on. I don't know why. Don't get me wrong. It's the weirdest thing. I don't have enough hair to have a Jerry Curl, but for some reason that song does it for me. Um, all right, so <laughs> Kirby, this question is for you, and then Alex, you're gonna be next. What is something that you wish you enjoyed? I wish I had more time with my family. That's that's not the truth. More time. I wish I would enjoy more time with my family. Oh, what I oh mean okay. By Woo, is, boy, <laughs> you might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I mean by that is I, I'm pulled in a lot of different directions. Mm -hmm. um, so like this interview here, right after this interview, I have to leave and go to another meeting. And uh, I had meetings all day and stuff like that. So that takes away from time for my family. So yeah. just spending more time with my family. Okay. Love That's, it. Yeah. Love it. Alex, what about you? Something that I wish that I enjoyed. Man, that that's a hard question. Jeez. I would, I would, I mean, Kirby's has a great point. He's a lot more busy than I am, and I'm sure I'll get there um, some point soon. But, geez, I don't even know if I have an answer. I, I, I really don't know. It's cool. That it's I cool. Don't worry. Because I, I have to say, I have to say, I, I really, I'll, I'll say this. Okay. Um, I don't think there's much that I put myself in that I don't enjoy. Um, I kind of look at life like a blessing and every second that I can get, I try to remember it the best I can. Um, because to me, time is the most valuable asset. So I would say I enjoy life. I, I really do. So every, I mean, I enjoy pretty much everything. I don't think there's anything that's in my life that, because I'll say this, if there's something in my life, mm -hmm. and it could be even people that I love, if it's in my life and it's negative and I don't like it, I cut it out immediately. I just, I don't want to tolerate Ooh, it. Ooh, that's a, that's a low-key bar, Alex. Well done. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if it's, if it's no good for you, cut it out. Nobody needs it. Get it out of there. Yeah. I, am, I am nowhere near as noble as you. So for me, the thing that I wish I enjoyed more, uh, and given the holidays, is kind of thematic. I wish I enjoyed those Hallmark movies my, my mother and my sisters like watching. I, bro, I don't know what it is. I know y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about too. That's what you're yeah, laughing yeah, at. You know exactly yeah. what I'm talking about. As soon as the movies start, I already know the ending. So now I got to spend an hour and a half watching some stuff. I already know the ending too. I, dude, Jesus Christ. I hate that. I hate those. All right. Um, <laughs> this time I'm gonna go first this time. Um, and the question is, what excuse would you use to get out of jury duty? I, <laughs> I, ah, this is a, this is a tough one. Um, this is a bit incriminating. Um, what would I, what would I use to get out of jury duty? I would say, um, that my wife is pregnant knowing full well that she's most likely not. <laughs> I'm definitely using that, and I will oh, forge yeah. documents. Uh, this is not it's not on record for those of you watching. This isn't on record. I'll forge documents. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, if if this is the case, I you know if I really had to get out, that's what I'd do. But that's not the case, and I really would do. I'm lying. All right, <laughs> Kirby, don't arrest me. Good, Kirby. <laughs> Kirby, it's, it's on you. It's on you. Your turn to answer this question. What oh, excuse man. would you use to get out of jury duty? Uh. I probably I probably would uh go fly to a rental property and then say I can't afford to come back. <laughs> oh, that's a great answer. <laughs> that's a that's a really good answer. <laughs> All right, Alex. <laughs> Alex, what about you? Okay. Um man, I have to say every time I get the jury do this like summoning uh, the jury duty summoning, I, I get so uh, like annoyed because I'm not used to waking up that early. But when I get there, then I'm like, okay, this is kind of cool. But I will say this though, my so in our family, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm my I have a in my family we're half Puerto Rican, then like my father is American. Okay. On my Puerto Rican side, uh, we have an uncle who uh, did some drug trafficking in his life, so. Another uncle be like, just tell him your uncle was a drug trafficker. <laughs> 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 like, I don't think I want to tell the jury. <laughs> 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 oh, 
that. Yeah. Yeah, that's a. I might have to steal that idea. That's a good idea. <laughs> that is. Oh man, that's a good one. All right, cool. 